how is everybody doing this morning? Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay. um, so, if I were to ask you a very straightforward question, are you for or are you against magical unicorn horns that cure all diseases? Right? Say, for it. Okay. Um, and, and you might have some follow-up questions to that. When I ask you, are you for or against magical unicorn horns that cure all diseases, you might want to know, well, who's going to be in charge of that? Who gets to decide who's cured? How are we going to prioritize um, which diseases get cured? You might even want to ask, what, uh, is, how is this going to affect the healthcare industry? Or how does this intersect with ableism, right? But I should hope your first question is, Sorry, what's this now about unicorns and magic? And if, when you looked into this, you discovered that people were protesting it, and what they were actually protesting was uh, poached rhinoceros horns ground up um, as a cure, um, you might then have a reaction. And if your reaction was, but I support the principle of magical unicorn horns that cure all diseases, I probably will not get through to you today. <laughs> but for the rest of you, what my job is going to be is to make the case <coughs> that magical unicorn horns that cure all diseases and freedom of speech are equivalent. That is to say, freedom of speech does not exist. It has never existed in the United States. Under the current system, it probably never can exist. But also, really importantly, when people say freedom of speech, what they really mean is a euphemism for something bad. In this case, it's not post rhinoceros horns, it is hate speech, okay? Um, the title of this comes from a book, and that book is P.E. Moskowitz's um, The Case Against Free Speech, published last year. However, I did also read another book from 2007 that's called uh, Freedom, the Thought We Hate by Anthony Lewis. Um, and I'm going to try to preempt some of the pushback that I expect you to have. Um, so this is my attempt to make the case for freedom of speech before I make the case against it. <coughs> so our right to express ourselves is critically important to living in a pluralistic democratic mm -hmm. society. If we're not free to speak our minds, even to say the most unpopular of ideas, we are little better than a mob. People who have a problem with freedom of speech really only have a personal problem with being too sensitive when it's their turn to be offended. The right to offend is sacrosanct. If you aren't capable of listening to ideas that make you uncomfortable, you will never grow as a person. The Nazis burned books, you know, and our college campuses and their obsession with safe spaces and cancel culture are infantilizing millennials in universities right now. Moreover, as St. Augustine said, the truth is like a lion. You don't have to defend it. Let it loose. It will defend itself. If you want to restrict someone else's speech, it's an admission that you're afraid of its power and your own views can't, complete, can't compete in the marketplace of ideas. To know who's really ruling over you, simply find out who you aren't allowed to criticize. That's what Voltaire said. Everyone deserves to have their say in a pluralistic society like ours, even those whose views are the most loathsome and the most marginalized, like Nazis, white supremacists, nativists, like homophobes, transphobes, misogynists, anti-Semites, rapists, and war criminals, the people that no one would hear from otherwise. There is nothing less liberal and more fascist, frankly, than wanting the government and corporations to be the ones deciding what speech is acceptable and unacceptable, and that is why all of us must actively fight for freedom of speech, no matter what is being said, and especially if we disagree with it. Okay, so that I think is, is the thoughts that people have when they say we support freedom of speech. Uh, but to clear up a couple of things you may already know, um, St. Augustine did not say that quote about the dudes like lion. Um, that's a quote from a uh, conservative evangelical in the 19th century who's talking about the Bible. Um, that quote about Voltaire didn't say it. That's actually a Nazi pedophile, and he was talking about Jews. Um, the uh, Nazis did burn books, but they didn't just burn them as a show of protest. Uh, 
with things like the Institute for Sex Research, they were trying to eradicate the knowledge entirely. Um, and uh, when George Orwell is writing things about uh, 1984, he's not just criticizing other places, he was criticizing his own society. Um, so I don't find that to be very persuasive. I don't find the case for free speech to be persuasive because when I say it doesn't exist, I mean, it. if we say freedom of speech is a principle we care about, we rank it below many, many, many things. So for example, I cannot directly threaten someone in particular, right? If I say I'm going to do violence to you, that is uh, a right free speech doesn't have. What about if I make a false and defamatory claim against you? Is that allowed? Yes. You said yes? Yeah. Libel slander says that but it's not. That's a civil court even, a matter, not a criminal. Okay. Um, so you're saying criminally, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, but I'm going to face consequences for it, right? Yes. I'm going to face consequences for saying speech is not true, possibly, right? Um, do I have the legal right to go into someone's home? and say whatever I want there. Uh, tennis rights say that even my homeowner can't come to my home and say whatever he or she wants to. Um, private property rights also trump freedom of speech. You can't go onto someone else's property and say whatever you want. Um, that's part of why union organizers are legally not allowed to talk to employees somewhere. So private property rights and uh, restrictions on unions trump freedom of speech. Um, can you go into McDonald's and hold up a sign peaceably that says um, they have terrible farming practices, or can they kick you off? So they can, that means that their property rights and their business rights trump your freedom of speech. Um, can you be loud wherever you want? Or is that disturbing the peace? That trumps your freedom of speech. Okay, um, can I, um, can I, make a, a video and use a video from someone else, right? So using someone else's intellectual property rights. I can, maybe, but it also might get struck down because fair use is kind of um, fungible these days, right? In, in general, I, I can't just take someone else's entire video and share it. Their intellectual um, copyright laws trump my freedom of speech. Um, there, I should say there, there's no shortage of these things. So we say we care about freedom of speech above everything. I'm an absolutist. I care about freedom of speech above every other thing. But in practice, we're going to put all these other things on top of it. Um, and while it's true sometimes that you may have freedom of speech in principle, if in practice you don't, I would say that's more important. So for example, uh, you don't have the right to protest without a permit, right? So permitting rights trump your freedom of speech in some cases. Uh, if you are blocking the road, traffic laws trump your freedom of speech. Um, you can be arrested by police for being in a protest, and if they drop the charges, does that stop you from having been arrested? Are you able to get out of jail if they keep the charges going if you can't pay for bail? So at present, freedom of speech does not exist. Or at least we can say there are so many um, counterexamples <coughs> and um, uh, things that go against it that it may as well not, right? Um, and I think the response to that is, that's a really good reason why we should fight even harder. We need to restore freedom of speech in this country, right? Because then degrade it over time. Um, but that I would ask, when did freedom of speech exist? Does anybody have a, an answer for when freedom of speech? I'm gonna say never. You say never, that's a good answer. But this time the language was spoken. First time language was spoken. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could, so I'd say in this country, in the United States. Um, we would say, I think, um, freedom of speech didn't exist in 1788 because um, the amendment wasn't passed yet. 1791 is when uh, the Bill of Rights and the First Amendment get rat uh, ratified, right? Um, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. But it doesn't exist at all for states until uh, 1888, uh, sorry, 1868. Um, and that's with the 14th Amendment. Prior to the 14th Amendment and the Equal Protection Clause, the Federal Bill of Rights didn't apply to any of the states, right? So it definitely didn't exist prior to 1868. Um, but actually, it wasn't until 1925 for the First Amendment, and that's Gitlow versus New York. Um, and if you look at that chunk of time, 1788 to 1925, that's a pretty long time. Um, 
but even for the federal government, freedom of speech doesn't apply. So if you look at um, the uh, Espionage and, uh, sorry, um, the Alien and Sedition Acts, um, that is uh, what John Adams' administration um, pushed um, during uh, 1798. Uh, it was to target French sympathizers um, and particularly Jeffersonian Democrats. So it's 1791, we get the, the First Amendment. It doesn't even last a decade before the federal government passes uh, laws restricting it. And while it could have been uh, challenged in the courts, it wasn't. If it had been, all of the judges were appointed by John Adams in Washington, so it would have been upheld. Um, but at the federal level, we have lots of examples of this, particularly around slavery. So um, in 1836, the House of Representatives passed its own gag rule uh, preventing the discussion of abolitionism or any curtailment of slavery. Um, and, and kind of a twist, uh, former President John Quincy Adams uh, was actually censured several times because he refused to not talk about it. Um, actually, on the issue of slavery, um, freedom of speech is probably the most restricted. Uh, in 1837, Missouri banned discussion uh, against slavery in general. You couldn't say anything. Um, William Lloyd Garrison was based out of Massachusetts, but in 1828, he was jailed uh, because he um, spoke poorly of a slaver in his own area. Uh, he was nearly lynched in the 1830s by a mob, but survived. Um, and also in the 1830s, the legislature of Georgia put a bounty on a person in Massachusetts to drag him back to Georgia so that he could be uh, jailed. Uh, that bounty was the equivalent today of $150,000. Um, and in Louisiana, white strangers were not allowed to talk to enslaved people. If you were a white person talking to an enslaved person, you were assumed to be an abolitionist. If you were a stranger, uh, you'd be arrested. And um, that's pretty typical of these restrictions. Uh, the last time that I talked, I talked about the Comstock Laws. That was passed in 1873, and it was designed to uh, fight uh, what they called um, obscenity. Obscenity, in this case, meant talking about uh, contraception. It meant talking about women's orgasms. It meant talking about anything that be, could be construed as uh, bodily autonomy or pleasure. Uh, those uh, affected uh, Margaret Sanger, the uh, founder of Planned Parenthood. She briefly had to flee the country in 1914, but they were on the books until 1965. Um, so in the early 20th century, um, things are looking pretty bad. Uh, unions, right, are also uh, regularly beaten. So you can be beaten and jailed for striking. So that also is not a free speech right you have. Um, I guess most of us though are familiar with uh, what you can and can't say, right? So uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes in a uh, case in 1919 said that you cannot shout fire, falsely shout fire in a crowded theater, right? So for people who have not heard this from me, do you know what that applies to? Okay, what is it? Um, there were, I think it was, I think it was uh, socialist activists mm -hmm. who were distributing pamphlets against the war. Mm -hmm. And um, the argument was that these, these, uh, these anti-war pamphlets were the equivalent of shouting fire in a crowded theater because right. they were you know, preventing the, the, the United States from adequately, mm -hmm. you know. Right, right, so World War I, is a war happening in Europe. There is a person, Charles Schenck, who was delivering uh, pamphlets that said that uh, the draft specifically violates the 13th Amendment because it's uh, involuntary servitude, right? He is arrested, I believe he's uh, prosecuted under the Espionage and Sedition Acts for this, and the Supreme Court upholds it unanimously that uh, handing out pamphlets that say you can't be drafted is the equivalent of shouting fire in a crowded theater falsely. Um, he's not the only one, of course. Um, Eugene V. Debs, the presidential candidate and orator, uh, was arrested not for the speech that he gave, but because the notes that he had written uh, seemed to indicate that he was going to give an anti-war speech. So not even what he actually said, but based on the context of the notes. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison and uh, a lifetime of disenfranchisement. He was later pardoned by uh, the Harding administration, um, but he still died based on an illness he contracted while in prison. Uh, lots of people, um, Emma Goldstein famously, was deported, right? So they deported anarchists and socialists for 
their speech uh, that was considered inherently dangerous. Um, and I, I think when we say that the limits of free speech are uh, criticizing war, uh, criticizing slavery, uh, talking about reproductive uh, health care or uh, orgasms, that, that, is, that is the state of what things were. Um, and I've been cheating this entire time because I've only been talking about what's illegal for white men who are free to say, right? Thank you. So this is only if you are free in society and you're not free to talk about any of these things. Um, of course, suffragettes were uh, beaten and arrested and jailed uh, because they were picketing outside the White House in 1917 and um, that was not allowed. So they had freedom of speech, but not actually. Uh, and to not like skip through the next 80 years or so. Um, but that was Red Scare 1. We have Red Scare 2 uh, with Joseph McCarthy and after World War II where uh, it is illegal somewhat to be a communist. You can't hold certain jobs. If you were a socialist in the 1920s and 30s, it's gonna come back and get you. Um, in practical senses, even things that weren't exactly, let's say if, if the police have the ability to murder you in your bed and face no consequences for it. Um, the fact that you have the freedom to say something is not super important, right? Fred Hampton of the Black Panthers was basically executed by law enforcement in Chicago. Um, and it wasn't for anything that he did, exactly. It was for starting a movement and speaking out against things like war. Um, the FBI, as we know, um, targeted civil rights activists. Local police targeted civil rights activists. Uh, and if you haven't heard of it before, there was an FBI program called Coin Tell Impro, uh, which is their counterintelligence program. They sent people into left-wing um, activist organizations, uh, had them start relationships with people falsely, uh, and then also did things to gaslight them. So doing, I wish I could remember the most absurd examples, but the sort of things like you would cut off their power, their electricity, and they would have already paid it, right? You would send them letters that were um, just absurd things, and it was to make them paranoid, right? The only reason we know about this is that someone broke into the FBI building and found it out and, and talked about it. Um, but that was the way that they went after people's speech, okay? So we don't have free speech now. I don't think we can argue it was ever better. There wasn't a better time because um, the government, and this is just the government, has always been stamping out certain kinds of it punishing people for wanting to share things. Um, I also don't think that freedom of speech can exist um, under our current system. And uh, I think this is, this is gonna be a tough one for a lot of people, but um, do I have the right to freedom of speech equal to everybody else? Supposedly, I do. I do also have the same right to buy a thousand yachts as Jeff Bezos. Right? Do I really have that right? There's no law that prevents me from levitating off the ground and flying around this room. There's no law as written. Do I really have the right to fly based on my own propulsion? Right for it's not a Right, see, right, though, right. So, what's my right? I have the right to do that, but not the ability. So, what's, what's the distinction there? Um, no one, again, no one's stopping me from buying a thousand yachts. Is that important to me? Um, do I get to decide what Jeff Bezos reads? He gets to decide what I read. Uh, do I get to decide what Rupert Murdoch watches on TV? I don't think I do. He doesn't decide what you read. Okay. You can go read the Atme Reader if you want. I, I can go read the what? Atme Reader. He's not going to stop you. Okay. Or, the, or whatever you want to read. He's not sure. Stop you. Okay. So I, I have the right to look for other sources of information. Um, can I make him read what I want? Can I decide what is going to be the news of the day? That remains to be seen. Okay. I, I, I think Jeff Bezos can decide what investigation there's going to be, and it will become news. And I think um, when the Murdochs decide they want to have a news story on 24-hour cable TV, they decide that. I don't get to decide how uh, Mark Zuckerberg interacts with his fans, his family and friends, right? I don't get to decide what rules he can communicate to the people closest to him. But he decides that for me. And while I have this to decide, <laughs> why don't we say okay. discussion till the discussion? Sure. No, I, 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 it's fair. Um, I, I think uh, when we say I have the right to create a social media network that will have uh, billions of people, and um, mm -hmm. I can decide how Mark Zuckerberg um, communicates, 
the fact that I have that hypothetical right is not really that important because in practicality, I don't. Um, when we have a system where if you are very wealthy and you are in a protest and you get arrested, you can get bailed out and go on with your life, but a poor person can't, I don't think that that really counts as freedom. My argument to you is that if we have freedoms that only apply to some people, they're not really freedoms, they're privileges. Billionaires have certain uh, freedoms that we don't, and so I don't really have that, and we, we probably can't. Under the current society, we probably can't have freedom of speech um, in a way that applies equally to everybody. Um, and if that, were, if that were the case, right, and if the only issue were that um, we will never achieve an ideal we want, like freedom, equality, liberty, right, it is good for us to attempt to achieve greater liberty even though we don't have it now and we've never had it, right? Um, but when someone is defending freedom of speech at present, they're not saying that I have to uh, I have to watch videos of Bill Gates' dogs play, right? Uh, we're not saying that the Koch brothers don't force me to read their um, Naruto fan fiction, right? That's not the issue that they choose to force upon me. Instead, they have political ideas, and those political ideas, um, when they say freedom of speech, they really mean hate speech, right? When there's a speaker, and they're going to give a talk, and you say, I don't like that. If I say I want to give a talk on um, why we need better public transportation, and you say, I don't like that, my response to you is not, but I have freedom of speech. My response is, we need better public transportation because it allows us to move around better without gridlock, it allows uh, us to um, fit more people in a, in a smaller space, it's good for the environment, I have other reasons. Uh, but when someone says they, um, when someone is coming along and they want to give a talk about why racism is good actually, and you say, that's bad, they say, why are you against freedom of speech? At present, when someone says they're going to have a free speech rally, right? We're going to have a rally for free speech. Do you expect to hear everything there? Do you expect to hear just like all kinds of ideas? Or is it that you really expect to hear why the Jews are the problem, right? The problem in society is trans people. The problem in society is, right, um, when Joey Gibson holds a free speech rally, he's the Patriot Prayer guy. There's a very particular kind of person that's gonna show up to that and wanna talk. And it's because they don't want to directly defend what they're talking about. They don't want to directly say, I think that racism and white supremacy are good. They wanna say, I support free speech. Um, the example that I gave before about the, the lion, uh, the truth lion, that was from a conversation with a turf or a uh, trans exclusionary reactionary feminist, right? Um, but she didn't say, I think hating trans people is good. She said, why are you trying to stifle my free speech rights? Um, and the truth is that we already stifle lots of people's rights. Um, when there's a protest about how um, the, the bell curve guy, Charles Murray, can't give a talk at a, at a college, right? That is, that is stopping his freedom of speech to give a talk. I have never given the speech at that particular college. Most people don't get to. Most people are already discriminated against by that. This is a guy who has um, a full-time job uh, at a think tank. He's paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for speeches. Uh, why is it his rights are being taken away when he can't do this one thing? And why is it that people can't say his ideas are good? They say, why are you fighting against freedom of speech? Um, when I say that I am making a case against free speech, it does not exist. It has never existed in US history. It probably can't exist given the structural inequality that we have. But also it's bad, right? When people say freedom of speech, they're talking about something that's actually awful and they just don't wanna come right out and say it. And they have enough defenders. Um, if you think that Nazis and white supremacists are unpopular speech, right? I, I would suggest you, you look around at how um, white supremacists are treated in society versus other protesters. Uh, in Seattle, when there is a um, Patriot Prayer or a Proud Boys rally, right? They're on the streets um, and 
you have police protecting them. In Portland, you have police fist bumping them and giving them information about um, where counter protesters are going to be. Compare that to a Black Lives Matter protest where police got caught on camera saying, let's just arrest the leaders and then you know, that way it'll bring it up. Right? Um, I, I think when you look at uh, why it is that uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, don't want to crack down on hate speech, they say it's because they care about freedom of speech, but you cannot put them nipples on Facebook. There's nothing illegal about having nipples, right? As far as I know, no, but I know. right. But if they if they believe them to be them in some way, right? Um, and yet, uh, Facebook will kick you off for that. And they make a lot of mistakes. I got a, a ban for a week because I posted uh, an, it was an article with an image of uh, Kenyans in 1940, right? So these are just some dudes shirtless. He was considered to be nudity, right? Um, but then they'll say how can we possibly figure out whether someone like threatening sexual assault against somebody else is, is a bad thing? We, we don't want to make that decision. Um, Twitter uh, can't ban Nazis because they can't tell the difference between them and uh, conservative politicians. That's the example they gave. Uh, and yet, they will strike people down for sharing music that seems to be copyrighted, right? And you notice they don't believe in free speech actually because they already curtail lots of things. They curtail spam. They curtail um, all kinds of categories of, of, of speech they don't like. But when they defend hate speech, they call it free speech. They have enough defenders. So for people who I think care about freedom of speech, and we would, most of us would call ourselves people who do, um, the lesson is not that you need to um, give up on having vigorous debates and things like that, but you should restrict yourself to defending speech that's actually good. Um, because I think you already do that. You already. Um, Who gets to define good? You. You should. You should define good. And when I say that, I mean that um, I'm just going to be a devil's advocate for blank uh, when it actually is people talking about like genocide. Yeah, right. um, when it's actually um, someone who is talking about uh, hurting people, you, you shouldn't do that. Um, and I would say that already there is no free speech absolutist. Um, that is trying to get enamel into schools, right? They just don't. Um, public schools don't have people that are like, I, I think everyone should have a, uh, a say, right? They're not trying to get uh, the North American Man Boy Love Association into public schools. Um, but they will sometimes say that, you know, just because the person talked a little bit about genocide, you know, who's to say that we can't have uh, children exposed to, you know, all kinds of ideas. Um, there are people who need your help, and those people are people like the, uh, DAPL protesters. Um, 800 people got arrested. Um, some of them were native people on their own land. And uh, they were sentenced uh, at state level and, and some federal um, for protesting uh, a pipeline coming through their land. Um, you should uh, help out people who, like in uh, Washington, D.C., at the inauguration. There were 192 people arrested for protesting the inauguration, some of them because they were wearing black. Why? because they were considered to be black bloc protesters, right? All the proof they needed is that they had black on. Um, and while all those charges end up getting dropped, um, that's not really a win for freedom of speech when it happened a year and a half later, they had to travel to DC over and over again. Some of them lost their jobs, some of them had like camera equipment stolen, or stolen, the police had held it, right? So they couldn't do their jobs. Um, and that's a very chilling effect on freedom of speech. You should fight for those people. You don't need to fight for Milo, uh, What's his name? Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, he's fine, right? Um, he was being uh, bankrolled by the Mercers. Um, you don't need the, to fight for um, people who are bankrolled by the Koch brothers or um, I forget the name of the natural billionaires that fund the Daily Wire. There are a lot of people with a lot of money who are already helping um, basically anyone who goes out and says <laughs> the status quo is really good and we should keep it this way. Because when people have money and they got the money from the status quo, they would like it to stay around. Um, what you should do is work really hard to make sure that everyone actually has freedom of speech. And what that means is that people with the least power actually can talk. People with the least power actually have the ability to uh, say something out loud, and when their boss fires them for it, uh, they aren't evicted. If I have the same right to evict my boss as he has to evict me, 
supposedly. Doesn't mean much because I can't fire him. And because even if he lost his job, he would keep his house. For me, if I'm a couple paychecks away from being evicted, um, that's a chilling effect on freedom of speech. Um, when you think about freedom of speech, don't just think about it as an abstract principle, think about it really, like what is actually on the ground. Don't just say, I care about the hypothetical, uh, magical unicorn one. Think about when you're actually going out and fighting to support poached rhinoceros ones, right? Um, and for this context of, of reality, think a lot about power. Who has power and who doesn't? Who actually needs your help and who doesn't? Um, that is my case against free speech, and thanks for listening.